Hey everyone, this is John Carr. I was a co-writer, co-producer, and one of a handful of visual effects artists on the short film Mobius that we did this past year with the prototype Canon C300 cameras. And Vince asked me if I would put together just a little bit of a breakdown in terms of our Adobe workflow. So recently did this on Ask a Pro, the DV series over on the Adobe website, but this is gonna be more of a condensed version. If you wanna see a little bit more in depth, go check that out. Uh, but this will be a quick overview of why we decided to go with Premiere and CS 5.5 uh, in terms of our post-production workflow. So the main reason Premiere uh, was the fact that there was no transcoding. And secondly, we knew that we were going to be doing a lot of visual effects in After Effects and that the integration with those two products is amazing. It was kind of a no-brainer for us to do that. This is a rough cut. Our incredibly talented editor, Vashi Niedemansky, uh, put together for us. This is one of the earlier cuts. It doesn't have a color grade. It doesn't have the mats or any of the visual effects. Uh, but this is the premiere timeline. And what Vince wanted me to show you guys was some of the visual effects and how we how we did this. So I would get a cut from Vashi, and then I uh, was ready to go in terms of the plates. So this is one particular shot that we had. This uh, the story takes place in in the Mexican desert, and we shot this in uh, in California, and. As you can see, we've got a lot of graffiti on the rocks. Our main protagonist photographer is, is monitoring some cartel activity, and this uh, graffiti does not help the illusion of Mexico. So Vince asked us to get rid of it. I'm going to show you guys how we went about doing that. And I want to talk to you a little bit about Photoshop integration as well, because these, these products all work really well together. So best feature of Premiere, in my opinion, and what I like to do here, I'm actually going to send this clip to After Effects via dynamic link. I like to always keep a clean copy on the, the, the bottom layer, just in case if I ever have to go back and, and need that original copy. Once you send it to After Effects, After Effects sucks it in and there's really no going back. So I like to keep a clean copy on the bottom here. And then on the second layer, I'll paste the exact same clip, but that is the one I'll send to After Effects. So I'll do that right now. And as you can see, here's our clip. And After Effects, all the graffiti, and this is the plate that I need to work on. So what I'm gonna do, and there's a lot of ways you can do this. There's, there's some cloning tools within After Effects which work great. I, I wanna get into a little bit of Photoshop as well, because a lot of people are coming from photography, very comfortable with Photoshop, and you can really utilize Photoshop quite well within a video workflow. What I will do is, I've, I've kind of surveyed the shot here, and just wanted to get a feel for what the camera's doing. It does a tilt down to follow our lead character. So I pick something here in the middle. I'm just gonna set a reference frame there. So what I will do is, I'm gonna add a marker just to give myself a point of reference. And then I'm gonna go up, I'm gonna go up and hit composition save frame as Photoshop layer. We're going to call this Adobe plate. And, and then what I'll do is I'm going to jump over to Photoshop, open that file, which is here. And now we are in the Photoshop world. We'll clear these guides, but this is a still from our video. So you guys are, a lot of you guys are familiar with Photoshop. Okay, so let's start out with this Cody section here. I'm gonna start with this top section, select the clone stamp tool, select the patch of the rock that's clean and use that as a reference to paint out to Cody. I'm gonna select a couple different spots just so I don't get any repetitive patterns. And that looks pretty good. So let's save that. And go back to After Effects. Now I'm gonna import that file in. You don't have to worry about it. it's asking the import settings. We can merge layers. It's only one layer in that Photoshop file. And I'll drag it down into the composition. So as you can see, you watch where Cody was. 
There he is, and now it's gone. So fairly straightforward, pretty easy to do. Now the problem is, that's a still frame, everything is gonna be frozen, we need to get this in motion. <clears throat> okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new null object. And we're gonna call it Tracker. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this video plate from our original Premiere timeline, and we're gonna select Track Motion. And what I want to do is I'm going to select this tracking point and I find a little reference point that has a little contrast. This circle next to Cody I think will make a good tracking point. And so let's give that a shot. And so we're going to hit track motion. We're going to analyze forward and doing a pretty good job of staying with that point. Okay, fantastic. So now what I want to do is I want to edit the target. So I want these tracking points to go over to that null object that we created. Now if I were doing this for real, I would obviously go back and do the full length of this, but just for demo purposes here, I'm just going to do half. So let's go back to the center reference point get back into our composition and as you can see here I hit U and let me go back here have to apply it it's always important so X and Y yes and so let's try this we go here boom there are all of our keyframes our tracking points now what we're going to do with this null is we're going to take that still that we created in Photoshop and use this tool, the Pick Whip, to attach it to the tracker. And what that'll do is this plate will follow the tracker and all of the keyframes that are assigned here. So in theory, that still should follow the motion of the camera. Now the problem is, is that we currently have a big still that's sitting in front of everything and we need to create a mask just to show and keep that tracking point on just the Cody section. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag out a mask. You can see Cody. And now it's gone. I'm going to refine this a little bit, pull this over so when our main character comes out, it doesn't get in the way. And now when we go forward, it's a little bit bouncy. And we could work on refining that track, but for the most part, Cody is gone. Now, let's go back to Photoshop and let's work on some of this section here. So this is going to be a little bit more difficult. It's a little bit different terrain. We've got some cracks and things that make it a little bit hard to not get really repetitive patterns. So I'm going to select from different sections and, and I'm not going to take my time on this. I'm going to do it fairly quickly just so you guys get an idea could definitely spend more time and make this look a lot better. But for the most part, that chunk of graffiti is gone. So let's save that and go back to After Effects. And the cool thing is, is what I can do. And in the meantime, let's Let's hide this mask. I'm going to turn it off. Now I'm going to go up to this Photoshop file and I'm going to click reload footage. And bam, you can see that's gone. Now when I turn that mask back on, it's going to disappear. So we're going to have to create another mask. So what I'll do is I'll take the pen tool and I'll just draw. An additional mask and so now we have both and as you can see the problem is is this layer is actually above our plate layer and so when our main protagonist here our photographer runs out in front of that Photoshop plate he's going behind it and so this is the wonderful world of rotoscoping that we're gonna have to jump into and so what I will do is I'm actually going to duplicate that video plate. I'm going to drag it up to the top. 
I'm going to double click it to go into the layer mode and then I'm going to click on Roto Brush. So let's zoom in here a bit and what you need to do, and let's go forward a little bit so we get him in front of that Photoshop layer, is you paint out the section that you want to appear in front of that Photoshop layer. So it's a tedious process. The Roto brush isn't perfect, as you can see. It, it tries to do a pretty good job. And then you have to really go in and refine. I'm, I'm holding down Option and, and dragging, which creates almost like an eraser. And you're just helping it out a little bit. You're saying, you know, these aren't the sections that I want you to keep. And so you help it out, you try to do the best you can. You've got some, some different tools here to, to feather things out and to modify some of the settings. And let's go forward. And the roto brush tries to do a good job of following what you define. And sometimes it'll lose its way a little bit. You really have to get in there and refine things a little bit. And it takes a while. You have to be patient. See, so, you know, I lost it. And it is, uh, it is a little slow going. But, um, you know, you take your time and do a good job, and it really pays off in the long run. Now, let's go back to our composition. And as you can see, we've got our photographer in front of this graffiti. So if I take this layer off, you can see it's covering him. Now he's in front of it. And so as you go along, and the roto brush takes a while, and it's pretty processor intense, you go from frame to frame and get the photographer all the way through. And so that's rotoscoping, and that's what we had to do for several of these graffiti cleanup shots. The cool thing is, is you can go back to Premiere and it will automatically update in the timeline so you can see the visual effects that you've done in After Effects in real time within Premiere. Now you're going to have to render this one way or the other. You're going to have to render it within Premiere. You're going to have to render it within After Effects. You're not going to get real time playback on this, but at least you can see the integration of not only After Effects Premiere, but you also can throw Photoshop in there as well. And so the Adobe Suite was really a versatile tool and that's really why we decided to go with those particular products when doing Mobius. Uh, if you want to find out more about me, follow me on Twitter at John underscore Carr, J-O-N underscore Carr, C-A-R-R. -R. And let's end with some before and afters of the graffiti rock shots. Thanks a lot.